Four, it can be triggering for those with disordered eating habits or eating disorders. For those of us who have a rocky relationship with food, either in the past or present, it can be triggering when we are presented with caloric information and it can affect our ability to repair our relationship with food. By stepping away from nutrition information, we can place a greater focus on the enjoyment of food and creating a satisfying experience. All right, so before getting into what you can do instead, triggering, bro, fucking triggering. So guys, Derek, moreplacemoredates.com. Today we are going to be reacting to this article that was put up. It was actually a reaction to this article from a student that needs to deal with this. My university says they won't tell us the nutritional info of our food this year and that we should instead eat intuitively. Full article here. They basically said that some people have eating disorders and so no students can see their macros at all or their calorie count. Keep in mind that freshmen are required to take the meal plan. I'm looking for advice on how to track my macros and calories despite this so I can make progress. Anything is appreciated. So when I was in university, I actually remember these meal plans. It was like some super inflated price for food that you might not even want. Now again though, like I didn't, I never actually stayed on res, uh, re short for residence on campus. And I didn't actually have to deal with the meal plan personally, but I had lots of friends that did stay on res and did have to deal with it. And it just sounded like it was absurd, but presumably you were allowed to see the nutritional content of what you were eating and nowadays you know that's too triggering apparently this is the article you don't need to know calories to be healthy by I'm not even gonna say this out loud because that's way too fucking risky bro picture this you walk into a new restaurant into a new restaurant excited to try their renowned pasta dish you scan the menu because of course that is definitely comparable to you know college meal plan you scan the menu only to find the calories listed next to each dish. Now, what was supposed to be an exciting experience has become a stressful one where you second guess your decisions. Even though you really want the pasta, you order a salad because it's the healthier choice. If you have ever felt conflicted and overwhelmed when presented the nutritional info like calories, know that you are not alone in this feeling. Keep reading to find out the four reasons why this can actually be harmful when it comes to healthy eating. Four reasons why calories can be harmful. And the thing that's wild about this is this is a university I am super familiar with. I almost actually did my business degree there. But anyways, four reasons why calories can be harmful. It diverts your attention away from eating what pleases you. Eating is supposed to bring us comfort and joy along with nutrients and energy. We have taste buds for a reason. You fuck. However, when the focus is taken away from the enjoyment of food and placed fully on the amount of calories you are consuming, it can become an overwhelming and daunting feeling. It prevents intuitive eating. For those new to intuitive eating, it is described by its creators as a self-care eating framework eating framework to help repair your relationship with food and feel more in tune with your body. Counting calories can have the opposite effect as it allows external factors to influence your decisions around food more than your internal cues. Three, it gives a false impression that certain foods are unhealthy because of the number of calories. Calories can be misleading. There are many high calorie foods that are very nutrient dense. Society has led us to believe that higher calories equate with unhealthy food. But let's first define what calories even mean. Calories refer to the amount of energy that a particular food provides your body. We all need energy, so why are calories vilified? While your health status is influenced by food and exercise, it is also connected to your mental and emotional well-being surrounding food. So let's focus less on the calories and more on the eating experience. Four, it can be triggering for those with disordered eating habits or eating disorders. For those of us who have a rocky relationship with food, either in the past or present, it can be triggering when we are presented with caloric information and it can affect our ability to repair our relationship with food. By stepping away from nutrition information, we can place a greater focus on the enjoyment of food and creating a satisfying experience. All right. So before getting into what you can do instead, triggering, bro, fucking triggering, divert your attention away. Like, do I trust my brain to actually tell me like, what is the proper thing to be doing? It's like dopamine addicted as fuck, sugar addicted. Do I really trust going by the enjoyment of food and avoiding the nutritional contents of food to actually dictate my decisions? Fuck no, dude. It's fucking insane. <laughs> Described by its creators as a self-care eating framework. Counting calories can have the opposite effect. It allows external factors to influence your decisions rather than your internal cues. Dude, my internal cues tell me to go like watch porn, fucking yank it, go eat sugar, eat cookies, cookies, be lazy as fuck, play video games. I don't trust my internal cues, bro. That's the whole reason why I have things like nutritional <laughs> facts to actually steer me in the right direction so I don't become a fat disaster. Quick note from one of our sponsors. This is Magic Spoon Cereal. You've probably seen them on the channel before. They are a company that does care about your macros from their high protein content, low calories, low carb, zero gram sugar, gluten-free, grain-free, and natural flavors using monk fruit, allulose, and inulin, as opposed to acesulfan, potassium, sucralose, things that may be microbiome disturbing. Um, by the way, 
I have stuff with sucralose in it all the time, so I'm not saying that that's you know bad. We literally have it in our pre-workouts to make them taste good. But some people do prefer natural alternatives. And frankly, if something could taste perfect without artificial sweeteners, like I'd probably use the natural route, to be honest. So these, they have managed to actually make taste as good as childhood cereals, or at least within striking distance of them, with no artificial sweeteners while still being mindful of your calorie intake. Because again, actually something you should give a shit about and also getting your protein in simultaneously. For me, when I have a dirty, junky, shitty cereal, I get massive amounts of inflammation, brain fog. Um, it's just not a good, good, it's just not good from a health perspective, performance perspective, and I get no protein out of it. So I end up having to double up on my calories to then get my protein in, which I could have otherwise just got with, you know, 95 to 99% the taste with 13 grams of protein per serving, a relatively low calorie count, and not burdening my brain with excessive, you know, fogginess and just like ruining my productivity for the day. Cause that's honestly what happens to me when I get a giant bowl of like frosted flakes or something down the hatch. So in addition to that, they came out with these recently, which I fucking love. These are Magic Spoon cereal bars that have 10 grams protein and 130 calories per bar. They are great for being in a pinch, getting something in that is super tasty and has some protein content. Um, and it's still following the same kind of like formula of these, you know, the actual cereals as far as like the sweetening and stuff like that. And really goddamn good. They have a cookies and cream flavor. I've been devastating these as well as the cocoa peanut butter flavor. Excellent. And they have two more as well that I have not yet dug into. If you want to support me, you can check it out using the link in description below magicspoon.com slash Derek and use code Derek to get $5 off of your Magic Spoon cereal. You can choose you know, multiple different flavors, mix and match, and help support me when you guys use the code, obviously, so it's much appreciated when you guys you know, support the sponsors that support me indirectly, helps grow the channel, and gets you some uh, bomb ass cereal, bro. So click the link below, use code Derek, save five bucks. They ship to the UK and Canada now, so you don't need to drive over the border like I used to do. And back to our regularly scheduled programming. False impression that certain foods are unhealthy because of the number of calories. Yeah, so obviously some nutrient dense foods are higher in calorie, but at the end of the day, you still need to know your total caloric burden for the day so you don't overeat. Why are calories vilified? This is such like a fucking <laughs> diversion from the overarching point that should be taken away realistically. Yeah, we need energy. Yeah, why are calories vilified? Like. Overeating is vilified. That not fucking calories. You need calories. It's the fact that it's very easy to overeat when you don't know what you're consuming. I think we did a video recently on how much people underreport or overreport. I think it's under underreport what they're eating. They thought they were eating, you know, like 2,000 calories and they'd be eating upwards of like 3,000 a day, if not more. And you can see why a lot of people end up, you know, gaining weight or not being able to get the weight off, despite the fact that they're meticulously calorie counting or whatever. Like even when they're actually trying to track, they're oftentimes wrong. So you can imagine when you go by intuitive eating, like I feel like intuitive eating is something you should graduate to once you've actually accomplished. Like some individuals go their life, their entire life with intuitive eating and do great. But for individuals who are struggling with weight, or are currently unhealthy, have insulin resistance, or you know, metabolically deranged, whatever the case may be, giving them just like, oh, just to start intuitive eating when they've been unsuccessful to date at actually getting the body composition that's most conducive to health, vitality, uh, mental wellness, et cetera, to just start intuitive, intuitively eating with like a university dictated meal plan. Like, holy shit, bro, not a good look, not a good look at all. Let's get into some of the comments before we get into what you can do instead, because I can't wait to see the recommendations. There's no way that's a legally enforceable requirement. I think they're going to intuitively <laughs> enforce it. <laughs> Speak to a university dietitian on campus. Every university has some. Tell them you need to track your calories because you're recovering from your eating disorder. Anorexia and you need to get to a specific number of calories per day. Using MyFitnessPal's calorie tracker app on your phone, Anorexia has the highest mortality rate of any mental illness. They will find a way to help you because they don't want a dead student. Walks in six foot three, ripped to the gills, 250. I am recovering from anorexia. Universities are private businesses, unfortunately, and they force all this bullshit on you. That's essentially unavoidable. I think they force you to take the meal plan because they're afraid their students will starve or some shit. I don't fucking know. This guy got downvoted like hell. Just because something is private doesn't mean there isn't laws that govern them. This is in Canada, so I don't know the laws in this particular case, but back in the day in the US, they actually passed laws requiring food businesses to have their nutritional information be available to customers. Is this something that is at your university or where you're from? Like this is, seems insane to me. Bring a food scale to the dining hall. Get in line to next to someone fat, weigh your meals to trigger them. Based 
Also, take out a notepad and large Sharpie writing, mark down the exact calories and sugar. Honestly, he should use a massive dry erase board that he wheels. <laughs> oh, and it's me fucking shocked and crying laughing. I would pay to see that. Never heard of such bullshit. I love the convenience of just selecting the food with the best nutrition values at my Mensa. Sometimes the same food with pork will have 300 calories less than the same variant with chicken because their source puts some unnecessary pan aids on the chicken variant is such a deal breaker. Yeah, like how do you know if there's like olive oil drenched all over the food, if there's, you know, some sort of, you know, topping that is used that is, you know, destroying the actual caloric density to a point that actually like pushes you over your daily needs. Like you should be expanding energy based expanding energy based on your needs, not necessarily like arbitrary, like what tastes good or anything like that. What you can do instead, letting go of nutrition information can be challenging, but it can make a huge difference when it comes to building a healthier relationship with food and making decisions that make you feel good internally. Shift your focus to and start to let go of external factors like nutrition information. Learn to tune into your body and eat intuitively. Read up on intuitive eating here. Seek advice if you need it. Transitions can be difficult, so don't hesitate to seek help from a professional familiar with intuitive eating. If you live in residence, you can chat with a residence dietitian or can talk to a dietitian for free by calling 811. She is a recent graduate of the diet, diet, dietetics. It's hard, harder than I thought to say. Program at UBC and is now a registered dietitian. Her passion for health equity and connecting through food sparked her interest in the field of dietetics. She hopes to build a community through food and to promote positive eating experiences. So personally, I think if you're trying to lose weight and you've been unsuccessful, Getting to the point where you can intuitively eat is oftentimes accomplished through actually being pretty fucking meticulous with it, accomplishing your weight loss in a sustainable way. But after that, transitioning to, okay, I've like seen what a chicken breast looks like at this point, that's four ounces, or I kind of know what this caloric density of this is. But even that, like people who are met meticulously tracking off the bat, they end up, you know, underreporting, like we've seen in lots of literature. And for individuals to just assume you can intuitively eat your way to weight loss when individuals are unsuccessfully dieting while being like very very, very hyper careful about what they're doing still. Like this is literally just saying like, don't worry about it. Like stop concerning yourself with this, you know, minutia of, you know, actually tracking your nutritional intake. Like it's so unimportant in the grand scheme of things. As long as you're happy, that's fine. It's like, no bro, I don't trust my fucking dopaminergic <laughs> feedback system. I do not trust it to tell me how to go about my eating practices. I need to know what's my caloric limit for the day. How am I going to go about allocating that like resource, like banked up amount of calories? I treat it like a bank account budget for the day and then allocating it accordingly to the way that maximizes my happiness, but also maximizes my staying healthy and lean and, you know, insulin sensitive aspect. Because again, if I was just eating purely for the love of food and the taste and everything, I'd be a goddamn obese disaster, bro. And I think a lot of us would be too. So this is complete nonsense. Do not advise you follow this advice. And I am shocked that, actually I'm not shocked to be honest. This seems like something you would see at a university, unfortunately, but hopefully they give some sort of ease of access to the students. Hopefully this is a exaggeration. And I don't know, to force somebody to not be able to see what the nutritional info is, is absolutely like nonsensical. Like what if you're a diabetic, you know? If you're a diabetic, you need to know the sugar content and stuff. Like obviously, I'm sure there are definitely, you know, there's leniency to some extent for people with medical conditions. But I mean, if you're just a normal guy with no like diagnosed, you know, medical abnormalities, you should still have access to nutritional information of your food. That's like a basic necessity. So, I don't know. Hopefully this is not actually what's going on. This is a little bit shocking while also being not overly surprising at the same time, but like, I don't know. Like if anything was going to enforce this seems a bit over the top. So hopefully it's not actually the case and hopefully this is overblown and this is, um, I don't even know for sure that this is like, you know, enforced via this. They just have, let's see, full article here. They basically said that some people have eating disorders so no students can see their macros at all. So like, I don't know, like I'm sure this individual is not dictating this. She's probably just basing off like what she believes to be correct or to be, you know, the most conducive way to be happy and still, you know, follow a reasonably healthy diet plan or something. I don't really know like how true this all is at the end of the day. I'm literally going off of a random Reddit post, but innocent until proven guilty. Like I don't actually know that UBC is enforcing this for sure, but if they are, pretty fucked up and hopefully they're not. But let me know what you guys think if you are at a university or college that enforces this, is this actually going on right now? And if so, are there loopholes? Because students like literally <laughs> deserve access to the nutritional information of what they're consuming. Like that is baffling if that's actually what is going on. They're being restricted in some like forceful capacity. So 
Anyways, let me know what you guys think. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow my Instagram, at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. Preventative medicine, hormone replacement therapy platform. Get access to high quality medical providers and doctors who stay on top of all the current literature on endocrinology, pharmacology, and just general preventative medicine from a cardiac standpoint, from a insulin sensitivity standpoint, from a multiple different angles. Like we try to be as broad spectrum and turnkey as possible. And I would highly recommend if you don't have a high quality doctor in your camp to get one, you know, cannot be understated or overstated the importance of that enough, as well as just getting baseline blood work. Even if you're not going to get it assessed by a medical provider, absolutely imperative in my opinion, to have a comprehensive baseline in case something goes awry. You can then go look back and see what went, went sideways for you and kind of like nail down and own in on like what needs to be fixed. So yeah, getting access to high quality medical oversight, I think is uh, very important. And um, hopefully this is something we can expand into Canada in the future. Obviously, something I'm very, very passionate about. And um, I highly recommend people take advantage of resources where they can to optimize their performance, vitality, health, et cetera. And that's not just from a hormone intervention standpoint, because again, we deal with naturals all the time too. You know, guys who just want to see if they can optimize their hormone production or, you know, their uh, biomarkers in general, ins insulin sensitivity metrics, lipid parameters, et cetera. And it's totally irrelevant to just, you know, the standard HRT clinic, like a lot of people are uh, relegated to when they deal with some of these like uh, hormone platforms. So anyways, you can check it out. And again, don't expect that everything is going to come down to medications. It also comes down to lifestyle recommendation changes from a dietary aspect, lifestyle changes, sleep hygiene, et cetera. It's never just about medication. So that's what we pride ourselves on, kind of a long wind ramble on that. Anything else in the video description, my recommended diet model for gaining muscle and sports performance. And we, in there, there is, you know, very much attention to detail paid to, you know, micro and macronutrients, not, not even just macros, micronutrient, mineral intake, vitamin intake. Like these are things you should not fucking overlook. Like very important stuff to optimize your performance, quality of life, etc. Anything else that supports me, it's all down there. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.